Jeffrey Denton, Chapter 10, Andy versus Terry. I storm out of my high security photo chip storage facility and into the kitchen. Terry and Mel Gibbon are making popcorn with the lid off the pot. Freshly popped popcorn is popping in all directions while Mr. Big Shot and his crew film the whole thing. Hey, chip thief! I yell at Terry. You stole my chips! No, I didn't, says Terry. Why would I want to steal your stinky old chips? I'm a movie star now and I can have all the chips I want. Yeah, well, maybe you stole them before you were a movie star, I say. Did you ever think of that? No, I didn't think of that, he says. And I didn't think of anything else either. And I didn't steal your stupid old chips. Did, I say. Didn't, says Terry. Did, didn't, did, didn't. So you deny it, I say. Absolutely, says Terry, folding his arms. Then there's only one way to settle this, I say. A fight. Says, no, a fight? Says Mr. Big Shot, hopefully. No, I say. A court case. We'll let Judge Gavelhead decide. I love it, says Mr. Big Shot. Courtroom dramas are box office gold. Let's go. We climb up to the courtroom. Mr. Big Shot and his crew set up the cameras. Lights, camera, action, he shouts. Yeah, Judge Gavelhead is literally a judge with a gavel for a head. <laughs> well, how do you think this proceeding's going to go? Judge Gavelhead be be bangs his gavel on the bench. Order in the court, he yells. Let the case of Andy versus Terry proceed. He stole my chips, I yell, pointing at Terry. I object, says Terry. He's lying. He's just jealous because I'm a movie star and he's not. Judge Gavelhead turns to me. Chip stealing is a serious crime, he says. What evidence do you have to support this extraordinary accusation? Well, Your Honour, I say, I have prepared a detailed diagram showing how the accused did on the night in question with evil chip stealing apple thought use a pair of the most technologically advanced mousetrap proof silks ever invented to evade the high security measures of my high security photo chip storage facility. And steal my chips. Behold, Exhibit A. Exhibit A. The night Terry used advanced mousetrap proof stilts. Or the most technologic, the most technologically advanced mousetrap proof chip stilts ever invented to break into my high security potato chip storage facility and steal my potato chips. Okay, no wathers. Well, says Judge Gavelhead, this looks like an open and shut case. He turns to Terry. What do you have to say for yourself, chip thief? I didn't do it, says Terry. 
I didn't even own a pair of mousetrap proof stilts, Your Honor. Not anymore, you don't, I say. Because you ate, you ate them, you ate them to get rid of the evidence. Did not, says Terry. Did, I say. Order in the court, says Judge Gavelhead. He bangs his head on the bench. Ouch! He turns to me. Do you wish to call any witnesses? Yes, I most certainly do, I say. I'd like to call the very angry duck to the stand. She saw the whole thing. The very angry duck waddles angrily to the witness box. <laughs> I step close to the very angry duck as I dare. As close. Quack once if the chip thief stole my chips in this courtroom, I say. The very angry duck looks around and angrily quacks. Thank you, I say. I point to Terry. Quack again if I'm now pointing at the chip I'm pointing if I'm now pointing at the chip thief. The very angry duck quacks. Thank you. I say. No further questions. I rest my case. Really? That's not proof, says Terry. That duck will quack at anything. The very angry duck quacks again. See, says Terry. Judge Gavelhead bangs his head. Order in the court, quack. The judge bangs his head. Would the chip thief like to call a witness? Yes, says Terry. I call on Mel Gibbon. Mel Gibbon swings across the courtroom on a vine and drops down into the witness box. Do you know me? Says Terry. Yes, says Mel. You're my best friend. Thank you. And in all the time that we've been best friends, have you ever known me to steal anybody's chips? No, never, says Mel. Thank you, says Terry. I rest my case. Objection, I say. Terry and Mel have only, only met each other a few hours ago. And would you take the word of a monkey over, over that of a duck? Because that's what Mel is. He's a monkey. Objection, Your Honour, says Mel. I'm not a monkey. I'm a gibbon. Same thing, I say. It's not, says Mel. It's so, it's not. It's so. Well, actually, it is. A gibbon's just a small ape, and apes are monkeys. Okay. <laughs> Judge Gavelhead bangs his head. Order! He shouts. Gibbon! yells Mel. Monkey! I yell back. Quack! Says the very angry dog. Court dismissed, says Judge Gavelhead. I've got a headache. He stands up and leaves the courtroom. Phew, says Terry. I'm glad we got that sorted out. But we didn't, I say. Yeah, we. Yes, we did, he says. It's pretty obvious that I didn't do it. But you did do it, I say. I didn't. Did, didn't, did, didn't. There's only one way to settle this, I say. A fight, says Mr. Big Shot, hopefully. Yes, I say. But not just any ordinary fight. An epic interstellar space battle. Perfect, says Mr. Big Shot. Epic interstellar space battles are box office gold. Lights, camera, hang on, I say. What's the matter, says Terry. You're not chicking it out, are you? No. I'm hulking up, I say. And you better do the same unless you want me to squash you like a bug. Good idea, says Terry. Thanks, Andy. Don't mention it, I say. What are ex-best friends for? Ex-best friends? Would they care? 
if the other if the other side loses, if they're exes. I mean, <laughs> come on. We hold up as fast as we can. Uh, Marvel, why didn't you sue him for this? <laughs> yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Let the epic interstellar space battle begin, I say. I grab two passing flying saucers and crash them together over Terry's ears. He pulls the moon from its orbit and kicks it at me. Hard! I catch a meteor shower in my mouth and spit the meteors back at him. He grabs me around the neck and pushes my face into the sun. Hot enough for you, Andy? He yells. I break free, grab him around the neck and push his face into the sun. Hope you're wearing lots of sunscreen, I say. I don't think he is, though, because his head has caught on fire. That's it, he says. Now you've really done it. Terry takes the rings from around Saturn and frisbees them at me. I'm sliced into at least a dozen sections, which even for a space fight is going too far. So I have no option but to end it by shouting, uh, shoving him through a supermassive black hole, into a supermassive black hole. Are you ready to admit you stole my chips now? I say. But I get no answer. Terry? I say. Still nothing. Terry! I yell. But he still doesn't reply. Uh oh. I reach into the black hole and pull him out. The extreme gravitation has stretched and pulled his body so much that he looks like he's made of spaghetti. That's when I hear a familiar sound. Whoosh put meow! It's Jill and her space cats. Andy, she says. What are you doing out here in space? And what happened to Terry? Why does he look like a strand of spaghetti? We were having an epic interstellar space battle, I, I say, and I pushed him into a black hole. That's not very nice, says Jill. But he broke into my high security potato chip storage facility and stole my chips. No, he didn't, says Jill. Yes, he did, I say. He's a dirty, stinking, rotten chip stealing chip thief. No, he's not, says Jill. Terry did not steal your chips. How can you be sure, I say. Because it was me, says Jill. But I didn't steal them, I just borrowed them. But how did you evade the mouse traps? Laser beams, the ten ton weight, and the very angry duck, I say. With my flying cats, of course, says Jill. <laughs> So the whole thing turns out to have been a witch hunt. Oh dear. And the safe, I say. How did you unlock that? It wasn't that hard, says Jill. It was already open. You're not mad at me, are you? No, I sigh. I just wish you'd told me. I did, she says. I wrote an IOU on a chip-shaped piece of cardboard and left it in the chip packet. I thought that was a chip and I... I thought that was a chip and I ate it. I say. Oh, good. Says Jill. Then I won't have to pay you back? Jill! I yell. Just joking, Andy. Says Jill. I know how important your chips are to you. I think we all know how important Andy's chips are to him, says Terry. Which is why I would never try to steal them. I guess I owe you an apology, Terry, I say. I'm sorry I accused you of stealing my chips, took you to court, crashed flying saucers over your head and spat meteors at you, 
set you red on fire and put you into a black hole. Don't worry about don't worry about it, says Terry. Let's just forget all about that and be best friends again. Forever. But what about Mel? I say. I thought he was your best friend. Not in real life, says Terry. That was just acting. I mean, he's a funny guy and I really like him. But you will always be my best friend, Andy. My best friend. My best best friend. And you'll always be mine. Yeah, you're funny way of showing it, fellas. Cut! Barks Mr. Big Shot through his megaphone as he flies in on his face director's chair. That's perfect! Brilliant! It's the action-packed twist in the tale. Feel-good ending the movie needed. You filmed all that? I say. You bet, says Mr. Big Shot. I've got the whole thing. The public are going to lap it up. You three are going to be big movie stars. Me too, I say. Yes, said Mr. Big Shot. Every movie needs a supervillain. You'll be the one everybody loves to hate. What about me, says Jill. And Silky. Will we be in it? Of course, said Mr. Big Shot. Intergalactic Space Animal Rescue Service. Hilarious. But it's not meant to be funny, says Jill. Space Animal Rescue is a serious business. But Mr. Big Shot doesn't hear Jill. He's already on his way back to Earth. See you on opening night, he shouts. And we'll see what, or we'll see how that goes in Chapter 11, Big Shot Movie Stars, next time. Until then, see you later, and thanks for watching, cobbers.